I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rechaha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone Israelites. Also, salute and honors to your other brethren, your fellow believers of this truth, you Israelites as well. Okay, Shalom to you supporters of this truth, even your few sisters, and Shalom to the elect. So I want to touch on this video going into some prophetic events. Well, I'm not going to say prophetic events, but just through the scriptures. There's a brother that wanted me to do a video, a brother that followed the truth. On the timeline, let me say, or up to the destruction of, uh, in, the t in the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Right? So there's a couple of scriptures that came to my mind, so I might... I may jump to Revelation 20, right? Uh, maybe a little Revelation 11, I'm not sure. Um, just see where it goes. But the first thing came to my mind was Matthew um, 20, was it Matthew 24? And um, let me start here. Hopefully it doesn't take too long, but it's when these kind of videos, it take a little more time. Uh, Matthew 24 and, and 5 for there shall for many shall come in my name saying I am the Messiah Yahweh and shall deceive many now if you really want to get other history on it because it's a lot to go into you can get the breakdowns you can go there's a lot of um, great millstone breakdowns on the history Revelation 11 uh, Revelation 20 you know, all, you know, Daniel, you know, all the breakdowns. There's no way you can cover all that in one video. But I just want to get to the point on um, the coming of our Lord, right? For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars, seeing that ye be not troubled, right? There's one scripture I also want to get. I, I, I don't know why I left that out, but I'm going to put that up here now real quick so I can, um, when it's time, I can go to it. When I read that, I mean, there's, the main scripture should come to mind is one particular scripture um, going into these, this particular situation, how we know when Yahweh Shah is going to return, okay? Uh, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we see the wars in the rumors of wars, we see uh, Russia getting ready to get started, China, North Korea, all the nations, America, and America is going to have no choice to be sucked into this situation, right? For nations shall rise against nation, right? Kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Right, and those earthquakes doesn't always mean actual earthquakes. When you look this up, it also means all kind of commotions and disruptions and riots, right, in diverse places, places that you wouldn't expect, even in America. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So we're already in the beginning of sorrows. Again, there's a lot that's flowing through my mind right now that. You know, you just got to go through the spirit. You know, the time of Jacob's trouble, right? There's a thing of Jacob's trouble. Um, let me go to Second Ezra real quick. I believe it's Ezra. Let's go there real quick. And let's go to Second Ezra 15 and 19. Let's start at 17. Uh, a man shall desire to go into the city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Now I was um, was it Revelation eleven? I was going over a little a bit, and when it says, in the city where our Lord was crucified, because they um, what they did to the the Lord's um, people, right, and how they really did away with the Lord Himself, Yahweh, and put up different images said he didn't exist and various other doctrines that they spoiled us with in like Deuteronomy 28 and 48 
where he said that we will um, serve other gods. So that's a crucifixion of Yahweh. So he was crucified literally and spiritually. So this is why he's going to come back with fierce anger. Right. This we can also quote this and see this in Revelation one and seven. When he said he cometh with clouds and, and every eye that pierced him and everyone that pierced him, all his eyes shall see him, including the ones that pierced him, which also proves reincarnation. Because the one that pierced him, they're not burning in hell. Right. Anyway, um, their houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Right. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. This is almost happening now. But, but we talking about in a higher level. But shall destroy their houses with the sword, with your guns, and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Behold, saith uh, Yahweh, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reference me, which uh, are from the rising of the sun and from the south and from the east and from Lebanon to turn themselves one against another and repay things that they have done to them right like as they as like they do yet the day unto my chosen so I, I will I do also and re recompense in their bosom thus saith the Lord power right we're going to get the precept on that but first let's go back to Matthew 24 uh, and 7 okay um, and 9 then shall they deliver up uh, you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Right. Also another word for that, like when you see Revelation 2 and 10, uh, they shall cast some of you into prison and um, they shall basically do away with you. It's not always talking about actual killing you, but yeah, they will. But they're, they're, they're going to destroy your reputation. And this is what they're doing to the Hebrew Israelites now. And it says, you should be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Right? Which proves that the name is important. And you have Israelites teaching against that. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. This is where we get these thousands of doctrines I believe you might get like 50 doctrines pop up per day, right? And then these other people will read it, even the Christians and other Israelite groups, right? And they'll say, that's talking about us. You see how it go? So it has to be worked out where the Lord, I think in that same book in the Apocrypha, said, then it should be known who my chosen, All right? And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, right? But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. This is why we go into uh, as being a faith-based Israelite group, not all about the 100% law. It is about the law, right? But we need faith. And this is what Yahweh was about because you had a lot of uh, people who claimed to follow the law. Broaden their phylacteries, as Matthew 23 say. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the, all the world as a witness unto the nations. And then shall the end come, right? So you look at this where world goes to cosmos. I'm just quoting some. When you go into the Greek, it goes to commitso, right? Cosmos. When you go into the Strong's, it goes to commitso. And it talks about the um, bringing the uh, back to, uh, which was lost in the Israelites what was lost this is where we go in Revelation 11 and it says in that, that city uh, the, the dead body shall lie in that city that's called Sodom and Egypt right right even in the time of slavery how we got uh, destroyed and, and taken down so when we go to um, Daniel 12 and 4 but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and the seal this book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So there was a time where we lost our heritage, our identity. Some, there were some Israelite slaves who knew they was Israelites, but eventually they re-educated us, set up the HBCU, re-educated us, replacement theology, and gave us another form of identity, Jeremiah 17 and 4. 
uh, Psalms 83, discontinued from thine heritage. They took crafty councils, right? The crafty councils is setting up those colleges, Richard Humphreys and those uh, abolitionists who owned slaves, by the way. Martin Luther, who owned six slaves. John Calvin, who owned slaves. General Lee, who owned slaves, right? All claiming to be against slavery. But when you go to Jeremiah 8 and 11, it's a lot of scripture. I'm just quoting some of these. It says, they have healed the herd of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. So, yeah, we got healed from the whippings, but our spirit is still destroyed. If you can understand that. Luke 12 and 49. I think it's 49. He says, I come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? So what would be his purpose if it was already kindled? But I have baptism to baptize uh, to baptize with, and how I am straightened till he accomplished, till it be accomplished. Meaning, he hasn't. He said to all be fulfilled in Matthew five and seventeen. Meaning, all hasn't been fulfilled. Right? He's uh, I am straightened till it be accomplished. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. These is these are more signs that the Lord is coming back. Right, for uh, for uh, from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. Now, if I remember correctly, in Daniel twelve it says, "Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase." What's going to happen is even the elect, or even the non-elect ones who wake up to the truth, they're going to be having family that's against it. Now, there was one God said, "Israelite camp killer." He's always scoffing my channels he said uh, you know I agree with a lot what you're saying but why can't you just accept everybody to be part of your doctrine and I said well those people in the holy land says you can join but you got to come under them because they are the olive tree and I did videos on that well I haven't heard anything back from them since but anyway moving on right for from henceforth there shall be five in, in one house divided. We can see this in Matthew 10 and 35 as well. Three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father. This is happening today, big time, big time. The mother against the daughter, right? And the daughter against the mother. You see this all day long, man. And let me tell you another part of division. Allowing a child to sin, allowing a, ch a mother teaching a child to do all the wicked things that she may have done or the attire, that's wickedness in itself, right? That's wickedness in itself. You really, you know, you have lack of love, right? But as this thing move on and the economy starts getting deeper and things get worse and the famines and everything else happen, as we just read in Matthew, yeah, it's going to get real bad up to the time of Jacob's trouble. Father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter, the daughter, and the daughter against the mother. Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. Now, what comes to my mind here? Uh, when he said, he who do the will of my father, the same as my father, I mean, well, my mother, my sister, my brother, and, and so forth. You're not going to be the same as the heavenly father, obviously but basically your family, right? Um, uh, it's a lot to jump on that. So now we're going to go to some prophecy a little bit. Um, we're going to jump to, let me see where I'm at. We had um, Luke, Luke 12. No, we just read that. We're going to go to Revelation 20, I think. Yeah, we're going to go to Revelation 20. And um, now Revelation 20 is like a, 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 a chapter that jumps, you know, it jumps back and forth. So you can get lost. So you got to get the breakdowns on that. Because um, when you go to Revelation 20, it, it's like twofold. You have 2,000, two 1,000 year periods. And a lot of these uh, other groups and people get confused on that, you know. So we're going to go to um, Revelation 20. In seven, we're going to jump, I think we're going to jump right to seven. 
This is called Satan cast into the lake of fire. No, this is not Satan, the spirit demon Satan cast in the lake of fire. How the hell would he be cast in a lake of fire, according to you Christians, if he already in the lake of fire is Satan? I don't know. But anyway, and when a thousand years be expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now, if you know the history, um, right around 190 something AD, 300 AD, um, we were we were putting we had some form of power, right? Going to the Byzantine Empire, which means backwards. We as Israelites came into power, right? All the way up to about 1350, 1400s. And that's when the Renaissance came about. Um, um, and then this man came back into power. And slowly over the years, we totally lost our power. So, you know, when the Renaissance came about. And then um, you, when you see here, this is also going into Edom. We know we should know who Edom is by now. Genesis 25 and 25, right? So we're going to go to 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin shall be revealed, the son of perdition, meaning the son of destruction. Right, so we had a time where even the disciples was asking, "When, Master, when are you going to come?" And they said, "Look for this and look for that," but it never happened because they didn't know. Right, so you had a falling away, and now it's all being revealed through the mouth of his prophets. Right, so when you go to two and nine, it says, "Even him who's coming is after the works working of Satan." with all power because he received not the love of truth that they might be saved. So this, this proves that this man, when we go back to um, what we just read, Revelation 20, is this man, the man of sin, the man of perdition, the son of perdition, right? Um, and for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that, that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, talking about Israelites, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's why two-thirds of our people, uh, they're going to get it as well. Um, Matthew 10, 34, I just think I just quoted that. Think not I come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace. I come not to send peace, but a sword. So we go from uh, 2 Thessalonians and go back to Revelation I think Revelation 20, and we're going to go down to the eighth verse. And shall go out and deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number whom is, is the sand of the, of the sea. All right, so a lot of Israelites are going to get taken up in that as well, going back to Russia, the Middle East, you know, ultimately the missiles are going to come here and destroy Babylon, right? So that's what this man has done. And what he's doing, you know, the, the super elites, the, the 48, the top 48ers, they're playing both sides of the coin, right? They're running each side, okay? They're running each side and setting the whole, setting the stages. The whole point of them doing that is they believe that they're going to escape the destruction, right as long as they cover both sides and you got to understand that's what this man do black lives matter he funds that black panthers he funds that right clans he funds that okay marcus garvey he fund that the black conscious movement with steve biko he fund that the uh uh farad muhammad and the, the uh islam um nation of islam guess what he funded that Israelites, he's funding them them too with certain portions of the groups. This is how he gets down so he can have both sides cornered. He can put his influence in on both sides. And this is going to happen. Let's go to Joel 3. For behold, those days, uh, in those days, and in that time will I bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. I will also gather all nations 
and will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh's judgment, and will plead with them there for my people Israel and for my heritage uh, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So this proves the Israelites are all scattered. It wouldn't be one tribe in that land, right? It would be multiple tribes all over. And they have cast lots for my people. This is a good one, right? And given a boy for an harlot and, you know, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Here's the problem with Christians and their theology and their commentators. The commentators, a lot of them, they're not prophets, so they don't know. So when they write these things, they're always going to equate back to Babylon or 70 AD or something of that nature. Although when these prophecies were written, they were to come to pass. But for whatever reason, the Christians and historians always skip over anything happened to us. Everything. Now, when you go into the history of the Bible, even if we were heathens, if this would be mentioned in there as well. It would be mentioned that we bought on slave ships. Let's say we were Cush or Cain. Wouldn't it still mention that all history and records, even other nations, and they have their part in any kind of slavery is in the Bible. But for whatever reason, a so-called Negro, Latino, Native American is not in there after the 1500s. We just wiped away from 1500s on now. We were just cursed. But whatever, for whatever reason, the curse of us being heathens is not in there. Yeah, right. It should say something about slave ships, according to that torture. Anyway, so they're not going to say that. That's why the scripture says in Amos 3, he revealeth his secrets to his servants, the prophets. I believe it's in that one. It says, yea, and what ye have to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine, will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I recompense uh, upon your own head? Because you have taken my silver and my gold and carried away your, uh, into your temples my goodly pleasant things. And this is what this man has done to the Israelites and to the, our actual wealth. They're not even using our currency today. This is all thin aired money, digital. See, he's become really proud, right? So he don't have to deal with it. And they're getting people used to not touching regular true currency because Contrary to what you believe, 1 Timothy 6 and 17 is uncertain riches. It's not real. It's paper. I, re uh, I will repent if you recompense me swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head because you have taken my silver and gold and carried away in, 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 in uh, your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children of Judah and Jerusalem, church, uh, children of Jerusalem, ye have sold to the Grecians. Right. And we know who the Grecians are. We had some of our people who are uh, Grecians as well. But we know when it says here who the Grecians are. Our people act in the manner of Grecians. Let's say that. That yet you might remove them far from their border. You mean to tell me this history isn't here and this has nothing to do with us. All these events that's taking place. This is not us. Come on, man. True. There was many slave trades, sub-Saharan slave trade. You had uh, various others. You had black Irish who would look white. That was, those all servitude situations. But us, this is not even a slavery. This was a torture. Behold, I would raise them out of the places where you sold them, and I would re return you recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters. We can go to Isaiah 49, right? Into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, the Lord have spoken it. So at, even at the end of the day, we're going to have the hand in the next, I can't say it too much because you know how the tube does. We're going to have the hand in the next trade. And this is how it's going to go down. Right? So ultimately, when you look at the timeline, just look at the uh, incidents that's happening and you can link it with the scriptures. Oh, there was one major one. That I wanted to get. Revelation 13 and 11. This is the one I wanted to get. Um, no, 13 and 17, 16. And he calls of both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark 
and their right hands on their foreheads. This is one we can't forget, especially the way we push it. And that no man might buy or sell or save unless he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, right? So this is clear. This is not Christianity. This is not white sleeping with white woman because some white women are Israelites, by the way. It's not nations, big nations, small nations because the word nations just mean people anyway, right? So, And this also through slavery happened. You know, we, we as Ezekiel 9, the elect will have it in their heads and because they're fleshly on the left-hand side, they're going to do a physical thing. And this is why when you look at the word Mark in the old Bible, uh, what does it say? Um, I forgot what it says. The word Mark, in, um, it says you shall have free and bond to receive a character. The word would be character. And when you look at the word character on online etymology, it actually says uh, in print. Okay, imprint to the soul of witch, uh, witchcraft, wizardry and witchcraft. Let me look that up real quick. Let me look up character real quick. Get to that point. Originally, this word um, was spelled C H, I mean C A R E A C T E R without the H. It says a symbol or imprint on the soul, properly instrument of marking. Karoxin, Karox, engrave, Karox, stake. See, just like they they pierce Yahawasha, they're going to try to do that to us on the left hand side. Yahawasha represents uh, through this um, through his blood us being purified. And if we already purified, and you take their stake, you you have now xed out what the Lord has set up for you. This is when he talk about, but the the fearful and unbelieving shall not enter into the kingdom. Um, it says, character, um, let me see here. It also says, standing for a sound syllable, character, from the French, carox, engraved mark, instrument of marking, um, Branded, symbol marked or branded on the body. Symbol drawing used in sorcery, right? So you can't get around that. And I'm going to jump back to Matthew 24 and end it off. Matthew 24 and 26. Where, wherefore, if they say unto you, behold, um, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in a secret chamber. Believe him not. Talking about the comforter too. Claiming that he's the, the Messiah. Even Bishop Nathaniel. He's the, the God of Israel right now, right? For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For whosoever the caucus is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation, after those days. So the problem comes with Christianity where they believe the thousand years as we spoke of um, he's going to take his people up and then there's going to be a rapture and then there's going to be a thousand year tribulation there's a two thousand year periods right and then um, the ones who believe afterwards they have an ultimate chance of salvation that's faithless it take all that for that to happen for you to all of a sudden say well we are now not believe on Jesus Come on, man. Anyway, immediately after the tribulation in those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. Right? So you're going to have a lot of these nations. They're going to be in misery. That what the scriptures say in Isaiah 14, that pomp shall be brought down to the ground, their excellency, right? And then shall appear the Son of Man uh, in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, <laughs> and they shall see the Son of the Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power, 
and great glory. And of course, those missiles coming, you know, him and the angels. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, uh, from the four winds, from one end, of the, uh, from one end of heaven to the other. Right. Again, more scriptures come to mind. Let's go to Isaiah real quick. I'm gonna get Isaiah real quick, and let's see. And then I'll end it off. Maybe. Let's go to Isaiah 11. 11. Um, 11, 11. And it shall come to pass in that day the Lord shall send his hand again the second time to, re, uh, to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Himoth and from all the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an assign for the nations and they shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Right? That's it. So the signs are there. It's building up. And all you got to do is watch for the prophecies. All you got to do is watch for the wars, the rumors of wars. Stay on top of that. Right? Uh, the mark. Right? The, the World War III. Um, when you go into Re uh, Revelation 11, I think. And it talks about the second war is past, but the third war cometh quickly. <clears throat> I don't think I read that. I think that's Revelation 11 uh, and 8. I'm not sure. Um, let me read that just to be sure. Revelation 11. I believe that's what it is. Uh, 14. The second war is past, and behold, the third war cometh quickly. So we close. We almost out of here. We almost out of here. And you can see the prophecies manifesting. I almost forgot to go to Revelation 18. You can't go in a prophecy like with, uh, without one of these scriptures. You got Isaiah. You got the Old Testament as well. And 18, 1 and 2, or 2. And he cried with a mighty strong voice saying, Babylon the great is falling. It's falling has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth wax rich through the abundances of her delic delicacies. Um, now, when you read this whole thing, it, it goes into when Babylon is destroyed. Um, it says here, verse 9, I'm going to just, well, Revelation 8 and 7, This I like this one too. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord, the power, the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Shah, who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication with uh, fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament of her for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off. Now, when you go into it, you can keep reading this whole thing. It goes into the merchants of the earth. They're going to weep. You know, nobody's going to be buying and selling out of Babylon anymore. That's when they, their end, you know, is, is done. And you can also read Obadiah. And then we come into the point of salvation, right? When we take them, uh, Jeremiah 30 and 16, who take them captives they were as Isaiah 14, various other scriptures and then now everything reverses on him the captivity returns and now it's their time you know Edom shall be uh, 1 in 17 shall be utterly burned as well and all his habitation his works is going to be burned right and then the, the kingdom of heaven right they, they're going to do a thousand years in the kingdom and, and building and and cleaning up and getting everything in, in order prepared for uh, the lamb you know the, the Israelites starting with the elect anyway hope this lesson was edifying that's all I have on that Shalom